As we sit here, the NDC leadership crisis is getting worse. His Excellency President Mills is apparently losing the very little control he had over the party. Probably because of the president's own inability to tell us the truth about what happened with Wyoming. We are all aware that we are not being told the entire truth. And because of that, the center appears to be crumbling. Party chairman has rebelled. He has written complaining to his leader. And the gang of four, who actually were perceived to be the presidency, have also rebelled and they are complaining. To whom? To the president? The one day we're supposed to be manipulating and managing. So clearly, things have gone out of hand. But perhaps more of more interest to us tonight, that is why the campaign from their side appears to be beginning to take a bitter toll. And I want to share with you tonight information on hand which demonstrates that the tone of the campaign is not accidental. It's been planned. This is a document uh, which is essentially the NDC strategic plan for election 2012. And I'll read a little portion on the MPP flag bearer, and then I'll introduce my guest to you. It says, under the heading MPP flag bearer, Ghanaians are fed up with the cocaine stigma NDC communicators attached to Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado. The propaganda machinery should cook up new and better selling <laughs> negative messages about MPP flag bearer. Attacking his running mate is also important. The propaganda machinery should prepare adequately to smear them, especially after the name is declared by the flag bearer. Ridicule the running mate. Make comparisons with the vice president, John Mahama. Discredit the decision by Nanado and find negative stories. Now, very interestingly, it ties in to another page where they are advising the president. They say, there is a growing perception of corruption in the NDC. This is a recipe for disaster. His Excellency Professor J. Yale Mills has to take some bold decisions. Then he says, investigating the other judgment debt payments might be detrimental to NDC fortunes in 2012. We strongly discourage any form of investigation regarding past paid judgment debts. This will reveal that the amount is heavily bloated. Communication team, that is the NDC communication team, should be very careful the way they comment on the judgment debts. And then the quotation that should be of interest to Ghanaians as a whole. They take us for fools, really. Ghanaians are gradually being enlightened on judgment debts. And this is a gap where they used to steal money, organized government stealing through judgment debts. And now their strategy paper is telling the communicators to be careful about investigating former judgment debts. Tonight with me, we'll review the tone of the campaign as it goes, and then we'll look really at the election issues, registration, and others, which is why we are here tonight. Uh, Martin Ajayman Sankosa uh, is our elections and research director, uh, New Patriotic Party. Martin, Abby. you know, you were the first guest on this program. Sure. And since then? Many, many. <laughs> uh, since then, I, I, I got lost, uh, obviously, working harder, uh -huh. especially now uh -huh. that Ghanaians seem to be wanting us uh, than ever before. So mm. I'm back. It's good to be back, actually. Thank you. And um, let me thank the handlers of the program. It's grown to be uh, one of the best. You just can't miss copies. Ah, multi TV me. should be glad but to they, hear that. They, they have done a good job. Fantastic. And the potential or the prospects look good for the program as well. Fantastic. But thanks to all of you for keeping it Fantastic. the way it has, it has been. Yes, but this program will be useful ultimately to Ghana if we get a clean election. And the way the campaign has started and is going, Martin, how do you feel? Um, of course, we are here tonight to discuss election matters, but the kind of things we've heard this afternoon and otherwise from the past few days, clearly it's an orchestrated attempt to you know, attack the personality of another, the personality of some uh, MPP people. If there's a strategic plan to actually arrest MPP personalities, including the former president, 
uh, so-called uh, associated the limping man and otherwise. Yeah, you, uh, what kind of situation are we facing now? Well, uh, YB, worrying indeed, uh, especially in, in, in this time of our democracy, uh, we all hope and, and, and wish that we grow and mature along with our democracy. Mm -hmm. It's particularly intriguing to me that mm. if you look at today with, with, the, with, with, with the level of exposure of the Ghanaian mm -hmm. to information, the level of understanding and appreciation of the Ghanaian mm -hmm. to information, uh, the NDC still feels that propaganda is the best way to go. Yeah. And that is why I believe that if not for anything at all, the, 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 the end of the 2012 election mm. will define a very important aspect of our politics, where hopefully the NDC will grow to realize that propaganda does not pay anymore, and they need to reform the way they do their politics. I mean, it's not so amazing that you, you rightly pointed. Look at the document before us. Mm. These are documents put out by people who have sat down as a strategy and as a contribution to what the NDC must do to win power. Yes. Nana Ekufado, there's been every attempt desperately to damage Nanado's reputation, to cast Nanado out as a politician not deserving of any space in our politics. Nana Ekufado has paid his dues. Nana Kufuado has proven to the Ghanaian before, beyond every reasonable doubt that he has the competence to manage this economy. Nana Kufuado at least has shown, and everybody within the NDC who wants to be sincere would know, that Nanado presents the safest pair of hands to manage this country. Mm. Nana Kufuado has shown that he has a commitment to reduce the cost of living in this country, which is going beyond uh, the, 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 the Ghanaian. Nana Kufuado has shown some, some sterling character to fight corruption, some, some, some commitment to fight corruption. Right. I hold in my hand here a copy of his 2008 manifesto. That's right. We are yet to come out with the 2008 one. Go check commitments Nanado put out to fight corruption. Nana Kufuado is showing every sense that he's going to deal with the issues that confront the Ghanaian. And we thought that was going to be the defining you know, uh, way to go with our politics. But clearly, then this is shown that they are not in to discuss the issues. Nanado's attacks on Nanado started uh, from womanizing. They jumped to we. They came to cocaine. In the document you just read, it's dawning on them that cocaine and all of those character attacks no longer washes with the Ghanaian. Therefore, how do we concoct further you know, uh, false accusations. How do we even draw former President Kufo and former government appointees into this Woyome President Mills uh, uh, theft Cover thing? Up. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's, a total it's, it's, it's so bad. And instead of letting us fight this issue the way we ought to, it does not matter who is being God, as the President put it. Unfortunately, the President has missed every opportunity to even walk his own talk. Yes. I, I thought that when Martin Amidu, former Minister, Attorney General of Justice, showed that commitment, gave that indication to fight to return back to the state every person who lost, the president was going to encourage him to do. The president rather kicks him out, an endorsement of that particular act. This is a president who, in the early days of his government, at a mid the press series, when the question about Mustafa Mohammed came up, yes. The president looked into the Ghanaian in the eye and said, looked at the Ghanaian in the eye and said, for him, that wasn't the first time a minister of state had traveled uh, with his girlfriend at state expense. So and lied to collect their visa. Civil servants who acted more or less as whistleblowers mm. got themselves in serious trouble. Mm -hmm. National security investigated them, and on the basis of that premise, uh, they, 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 they had all kinds of treatments. They had to resort to the courts to reinstate them and reinstate whatever benefits that they, they, they deserve to have. I mean, it's endless, on and on and on. Martin, let me, let me share this with you. Uh, it's still a part of the document. It says, countering the Woyomi saga. I mean, clearly, countering the Woyomi saga is not based on the truth, because Martin Abidu, who told the truth, has been sacked. 
It says, countering the Wyoming saga. Discounting the effects of the Wyoming saga is a non-starter. Revisiting the cocaine cases during Kufu administration can divert and divide the attention of Ghanaians. How? Then they make a list. Make new arrests, especially in connection with the 77 passes of cocaine. Two, link top former officials to the cocaine cases. Three, tag Nanado and the MPP. Four, the media and communication team must make it a priority. Six, that's five. Pictorial evidence in the hinterlands will be effective. In other words, they are going to concord, like they concorded the bank Story. accounts and distribute it in the, in the villages. Six, implicate former President Kufo. Then there's another heading about shutting up the barking dog. That's Kennedy That's Kennedy Japan. And a whole uh, lot of issues uh, have been outlined. Link him to the case, force him to declare his source of wealth, you know, and... Uh, 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 the first attack should come in the print under the heading, the limping man names Kennedy Japan and associate, and such other headings as the above. This is intended to make him retreat and recoil into his shelf, shell to stop him from attacking, and rather put him in the defensive foot. So clearly, the NDC under His Excellency President Mills are not prepared to face up to the fact that the state has condoned with an individual and stolen gargantuan sums of money, and that the president knows about it, because the president tried to deny it, and Yoko has exposed him, and now the people who are going to tell the truth are being victimized in the NDC. Yes. But why be? Even more importantly, the, the, Yoko just not exposes the president, mm -hmm. but further reveals his weakness as a leader. And that, for me, adds up to the leadership paralysis we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But I think it's about high time we point to the NDC. Mm -hmm. That's that no longer should be running around on the politics of cocaine. Mm -hmm. I, I sit here and I recall various instances of happenings of people within the NDC having had one or the other issue. Only well, yesterday in the graphic front page, 2,000 tons of cocaine. Yes. Baron. Well, we're in this country mm. where a known NDC communicator in the person of Mr. David Annan, mm -hmm. whose brother, unfortunately, some years back, Peter Annan, got arrested at the Heathrow Airport with drugs. I don't know whether it's fair for me to sit here and say the NDC is a party full of people who peddle drugs. Mm. In our time, our history, in some time past, the founder of the NDC's presidency, Mr. Rawlings, you had a diplomat who represented Mr. Rawlings in a foreign land get arrested with drugs. That issue is there for the records. We don't need to go back into it. There have been instances. Take the MV Benjamin case. After the investigations that came through, people went to jail and all of that. Mm. You had two men, Alaji Abbas and Tagore, go to jail. Yeah. In the run-up to the election, there were wife, rife speculations that, look, the NDC, on benefiting some support, has promised to get them out. Yes. Subsequently, on coming into office, these guys got released from, 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 from jail. The Attorney General then said notice that the state was going to appeal. To date, there's been no such appeal that we know of. In this country, a serving deputy minister has once consulted for a company which only tend to be dealing with drugs. Today, he works with shame <laughs> and, and sitting down. Do they have any shame? I mean, you have all kinds of people. There are situations where people who are charged with manning drug enforcement in this country have, in the early 1990s, had serious bruises with the, with, the, with the law on drugs. Way back in London, today they are part and parcel of the administration of this country. They are charged with the responsibility of fighting drugs. There are so many examples that the NDC cannot run away from. And it baffles me when the NDC tries to push the NPP as though, why? What has happened to the cocaine tent soda case? So well, I think that we should not let the NDC run away under the pretext that somebody has to answer for issues about drugs. No longer is that going to happen. The NDC has more records on drugs. But I think, I think the, point, the point that we made before is that fighting the drugs medics is a national issue. And that any party which tries to tag any other party with that is likely to fail. In any event, without a message, that's what they are trying to do. But their own strategic paper is telling them that Ghanaians are fed up with that process. And therefore, Ghanaians want to hear things about development, recovering the money that out of corruption 
we are being deprived of as a nation. The money that has been stolen with government complicity and government is running away, the only person in the government who told the truth has been sacked, Martin Amidu. And when vowed we come to bring back, back. When we come back after our first break, we are going to zero in on how they intend to rig the election in order to cover their tracks. The stealing that has gone on in the judgment, the 640 million of Ghana's money, stolen, literally stolen in judgment debts. And now their own strategic paper is saying they should run away from investigating judgment debts. The things that have come up related to this election, now we are going to look at. And I'm reading from the same document I started reading from. A particular page where I'm reading from paragraph four, it says the heading, rigging inevitable. Then it says, to win election 2012, to be fair is not an option. This is NDC strategies. This document has been presented to His Excellency President Mills. He has it, man of integrity, professor of law, the, the saintliest person in Ghana. He has this document. And it was presented to him well before. He knows it. Well, maybe he's not aware. <laughs> I'm sorry, maybe he's not aware. Reagan, inevitable. To win election 2012, to be fair, is not an option. But the biometric registration and verification systems limit the abuse of incumbency, especially the opportunity to rig. The only effective way to rig is at registration. More people, both qualified and unqualified, should be motivated and ties to register in NDC strongholds and discourage registration, especially in the Ashanti region, the opposition stronghold. Paragraph 5, Electoral Commission officials. Elections are won and lost on day of election. Let's infiltrate the official, the officials, in quotes. I'm reading from documents. Where it's a mistake, I'll read the mistake. Let's infiltrate the officials with NDC sympathizers. Their target in NDC strongholds should be to ease the system but to frustrate votes in MPP strongholds. They are targeting excess unqualified numbers of 500,000. This number should carefully be distributed to the four border regions, including Volta, Upper East, Upper West, and Northern region. Not only should you ensure that unqualified people will register, but you also make sure that they vote. Birth certificates should be created. Foreigners, especially from border towns, should be motivated to register. Once they have a birth certificate, they are legally Ghanaians. Martin. Wabi, worrying again indeed. But before I Gar go on. Gantuan election region agenda. Machinery in place. That's what the NDC is good at. Never good at winning clear or clean elections except rigging. But the NDC can take this advice. Mm. Let them not take the NPP for granted. Mm -hmm. Because no longer are we going to sit down mm. and tolerate any illegitimate manipulation of the electoral process. Mm. It will be fiercely resisted. Mm -hmm. Because no longer is anybody going to sit down for the mandate of Ghanaians to be hijacked. Okay. Right from the onset, you see a desperate party who has failed to perform on the promises they gave to Ghanaians. This is a party that flew to power on the wings of several promises to the Ghanaian, mm. and they come to power. The achievements have only been on paper and not on the ground. They have failed to transform the lives of the Ghanaian positively as they sought to do. Yes. And they think the only way out is to manipulate or hijack illegitimately the mandate of Ghanaians. But the NPP is not going to allow that to happen. And the NDC ought to know that for now, there's been several efforts to frustrate the biometric process, they've had non-cooperation at IPAC. At some point, the NDC suddenly felt that convening IPAC meeting to engage all stakeholders on the way forward was no longer necessary. Then came the issue of verification, which ought, or sought to add some kind of security, yes. some improvement in our electoral process. Right. To date, the NDC does not appear convinced that any effort to add some credibility to our electoral process uh, is something worth pursuing. And you look, there is a clear strategy to use the NPP's perceived weak areas. If you look at the document, it rightly mentions areas such as the three northern regions mm. and the Volta regions yeah. as the ground to perpetrate all kinds of electoral fraud. Here, they here hope to says, count on... It says, and the Volta region, right. constituencies that share boundaries with Togo, as has always been done, Will be the operation to get indigents from Togo, especially border dwellers, to register. Birth certificates should be acquired for them to handle issues of citizenship. 
The Birth and Death Department of the region should have members that will act as agents to facilitate fast, smooth, and easy registration. Then it goes to Upper East, Upper West, and Western region. Reagan in the biometric election begins at the registration, much especially when MPP is doing everything to win 2012. Indigents from Burkina Faso should be encouraged to register in the upper region of Ghana, especially in constituencies on the border, example, Chanapaga. In the Western region, refugees from Cote d'Ivoire can be used. More people should be motivated to register. We will caution that this exercise should be carefully done to avoid exposure. The department necessary should be professional <laughs> in this exercise. Ashanti region. Votes from this region have always posed a threat to the NDC. Voter turnout is always higher in Ashanti region than any other region. The biometric registration presents the best opportunity to cut down the registration of voter population. Hence the voter turnout. Reducing the votes from Ashanti region is a prerequisite for winning election 2012. So there you go. A party that raised a lot of eyebrows created empty noises in the run-up to the 2008 elections that indeed the register in the Ashanti region had been bloated. Subsequently, an investigative process was set up and it unearthed that there was really nothing but some human error on the part of the EC. Yet the party ran around with it until date. You have commentators from the NDC hold documents and fly it around. It is the Global principle. To fact. The propaganda but clearly, principle. Clearly, everything is showing here. Mm. It does not matter where they want to come from. It mm. can be Burkina Faso, it can be Cote d'Ivoire, it can be Togo. Mm. We'll fight them in the air, we'll fight them on the land, we'll fight them in the sea. Mm. We'll act as stakeholders in this electoral process to ward off any intrusion, whether within or without. The Electoral Commission will count on to do a clean exercise, an exercise that will ensure that the credibility of our election is there. We want to believe that the EC would also keep their ears to most of these manipulative... We will share this document with the EC. NDC is putting across. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the outcome of the elections will either be accepted or rejected from the onset. And if at the beginning of the process, these are the emerging strategies of the NDC mm -hmm. to try and destroy the exercise, to try and rig the process from day one. I think the EC themselves have to be concerned as well. I'm not too sure whether this has come to their attention. No, but the no. NPP will not only wait and ensure that the EC policies this process. We can treat security agencies as well to do. Although the document states out clear plans to compromise electoral commission officials, to compromise their security, and make sure that they have their way. But we are not going to leave anything lying, leave anything to anybody. If, if you read the story from the interaction between uh, Deputy Commissioner Kanga Yes. And uh, the Catholic bishops. Right. There's something very interesting there. Kanga tells them that in spite of their best efforts, it's important that the citizens remain vigilant because political parties ought to be prevented from using bully tactics, snatching ballot papers, and all that. And this is exactly what the MPP has said all along. That in the face of a corrupted system, in the face of the inability of security agencies to ensure that law and order prevails at the elections and that thugs are kept at bay, citizens should protect their thumbs, their birthrights. So, interestingly, Kanga endorses that. Yes, but why be even more, more intriguing, more worrying? Mm. For me, if you look at these undertones coming up from the NDC, mm. they, they are moving from intimidation, from impersonation, manipulation of results, corrupt and illegal practices, staff ballot boxes, mm. defective register. Mm. I mean, name them. You can outline Finance a number of things money. they want to put out. But for me, that is even why the EC ought to sit up and mm. ensure that we don't just add technology to the process, but any technology that we add finally inures to some improvement in the process. Yes. If you look at the 2012 budget, and with your permission, I read. Please go ahead. Um, is it paragraph. Eight, paragraph 8, 7... Now, come to the outlook, okay, 880. He said, Madam Speaker, the commission will compile a voters, a biometric voters register to replace the existing one, open it for exhibition, acquire electronic verification equipment, and conduct presidential and parliamentary elections. Mm -hmm. Just a couple of days back, David Kanga, mm -hmm. commissioner, deputy commissioner of the Electoral Commission, met with the Catholic bishops and specifically stated that no special verification machines will be needed to be acquired for the matter of verification. It runs contrary to the direct provision of the budget. Yes. At this point, we are not too sure what accounts for the sudden U-turn of the EC. Mm. 
Whereas the budget tells us that specifically the EC is to acquire biometric verification by machines. Yeah. EC is saying a different thing here. Mm. And this had not even been communicated to IPAC. The EC quickly rounds to the bishops. and goes to put this before them when IPAC itself had not been informed. As we sit here, what becomes the use of me going to put my fingerprints on some fingerprint scanner when at the point of voting on elections, that particular fingerprint that I put is not verified to ascertain that, ascertain that not only am I the one presenting myself with that card, mm. but indeed the fingerprints that are captured on that card we reflect it, that of mine, mm. okay? Mm. And if we do not bring any verification machines, that for us will help us ensure that people who turn up indeed are those who must have gone to register, taking the peculiar addition of fingerprints. This year's election is going to cost us over some 200 million Ghana cities. Previously, in 2008, the entire registration plus election cost us some 54. The extra, I mean, the justification for the extra addition of money is that we are adding a new feature, biodata, to the process. And it is incumbent that for us to de derive the full benefit of this process, we are able to ensure that people who turn up to register, in addition to their cards, have done that verification. Yeah. If the EC tells us that now, then for me, it does not even make sense to spend money to buy fingerprint scanners today does to go it do make sense? But all this is happening in the environment where the NDC is drawn up clear strategies to rig. Yeah. And it's incumbent on the EC to help us ensure the security of the process, the credibility of the process. It depends on them, and they have a duty to make sure this country is stable. It starts from now. Right. It starts from now. It depends on the EC to make sure that this country is stable, because if we are going to spend 200 million cities to have an electoral system, it must be resilient, and it must prevent the planned rigging, the elaborately planned rigging that the NDC government, the Wyoming Gate government, is financed itself to do. Because if you've paid judgment debts of 640 million cities, and you can't spend 200 million and deliver a clean election, then it means you intend to spend the rest of your bloated funds stealing the election. And Ghana will not allow four more years of this kind of stealing to take place. Listen to what is said here, again about biometric registration. Same document, the census figures. It is a good thing the census figures have not been declared. We raised this matter, and they went gaga. Sacking Grace Bediakon is politically prudent. These figures should be bloated in the regions that are NDC friendly, especially the four faithful regions. Then it lists Volta, Upper East, Upper West, Northern region. I think the people of these regions should be horrified that their names are being used and bandied about, yes. being taken for granted that they don't deserve a Ghana that works. Yes, because and that they are going to be used to manipulate Ghana. Yes, because it appears to me clearly that in the, in the wake of the NDC's desperation, they may only serious havoc on these people. They will stop at nothing to achieve that. And anybody who comes their way, regardless of who you are, uh, they will desperately crush you. And that is what every Ghanaian uh, who has a stake in our existence as a country, in our democracy, has to stand up or rise up against this very, very serious... I mean... We are told today by Martin Amidu that there are criminals in the NDC. And one of the biggest challenges the president has to do before he exits in 2012 mm -hmm. or 2013 January is to weed out the criminals in the NDC. They appear in all forms and all fronts, mm -hmm. within government, mm -hmm. within the electoral process. I mean, in every form. Mm -hmm. At least we are told by Martin Amidu that people hide behind party cards to commit all kinds of criminal activities. President Mills must be very worried about it. And one of his biggest challenge should be weeding out and getting our politics free of such criminals within the NDC. If the president does not do that, he wouldn't have done himself good. Posterity will not judge him well. It goes on, on and on. Because of this criminality, there is every effort to bastardize every state institution even before we go into elections. You rightly mentioned the sack of Grace Bediako. And you have no explained reasons. At the end of the day, you have a, a concocted reason out of a meeting. They try so to, to disgrace speak, her. Try to disgrace her. Create all kinds of justification for the removal of grace. 
One important question Ghanaians are not asking why be also is this. The Electoral Commission at least tells us that they are estimating to register 13 million Ghanaians. Mm. I thought that the statistics from the statistical service, which is not ready, also but partly they released, resulting. They released, uh, uh, how do you? Yes. Uh, when the, you release uh, the provisional, they put some provisional. But, but the provisional the are regional domain. based. It's yeah. telling us so today. The, the question I, I yes. want to ask is that scientifically. How could that be possible? No. Having released provisional numbers yes. for the entire region. Provisional regional numbers. Regional numbers. Right. Is it possible? that those numbers would deviate by more than 2 or 3% in the event they want to bloat the figures. Assuming Grace Bediaku has been sacked and the agenda is to bloat the regional figures. Can they inflate those figures? In any event, if those figures are inflated by 2 or 3% across the country, then they get their 500,000. Absolutely. All right. So Absolutely. any deviation, serious deviation from the provisional figures, figures. ought to send a bad it's signal. Pass them down. I mean, my, but my biggest question will be, even mm. here, mm. somebody ought to be asking the Electoral Commission, mm. by this document, the roadmap, mm -hmm. how did the EC come by that projection of 30 million people to be registered? Oh. If you go to Kenya, a population mm. of 39 million mm. recently registered 11, people, 11 million people, people who had you know, reached the, the, the required age. Yes. We are a country of 24 million 223,431 approximated to about 25 million people mm -hmm. and then we are told that 13 million people there is no statistics to back this i thought that every regional summaries that came to give us that total population of nearly 25 million yeah. ought to have been backed by some district figures mm -hmm. we do not have that as we sit here i'm not too sure in my electoral area in my district in Techiman, how the ec gets to know how many people are there to even inform planning and distribution of election materials. That's right. There are serious questions that need to be asked, or serious questions that are begging for answers. The way the NDC is going desperately to stop at nothing but rig the election mm -hmm. is a serious concern, and it's making answers to such questions so much needed. Yes. I mean, we cannot proceed without asking some of these questions. I am particularly interested in mm -hmm. how the EC intends to go about all of this in the face of no figures for them to work with. Mm -hmm. Again, if you look at um, the, 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 the creation of districts, okay, it's another matter. Hurriedly went and created 42 districts. Now they are facing the wrath of the people. Mm. You go to create districts out of nothing, and you're having serious problems even getting parliamentary. Well, they created the districts in order to have more constituencies. More constituencies. In order to the election. They wanted to gerrymander the election. And now the election. they have hit. <laughs> because they, 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 they actually play with the hearts of people, of people to do with the way they feel about their traditional areas and the need for development. But, but why be? You see, the sentiments of Ghanaians, it's clear. Go the length and breadth of this country. People are simply fed up. Every concerned Ghanaian had been watching their clock tick by the day since 2009. And no amount of manipulation is going to save the NDC. I thought the NDC ought to have gotten that clear. What the NDC for me, the worry for me, is that if you are not careful, the consequences, they're going to cause too many people to lose interest and faith in our democracy. Because if people were, 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 were pushed on sweeping promises, I mean, you could just feel <laughs> as though it, 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 was, it was about manna coming from heaven. It was manna. And then you come to government, all you do is to worsen the situation of the Ghanaian. The plight of the Ghanaian today is, you just can't talk about it. Poverty levels are unbearable. Life continues to deteriorate for the average Ghanaian, and the president does not seem to care. A social democratic government, they claim, rather believes in the position of higher taxes that will further impoverish and burden the Ghanaian. And they just cannot be bothered. Maybe they were using the taxes to do good things rather than chop chop stealing it. If it's not Muntaka, it is. I mean, the 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 the, 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 the judgment that became an avenue they thought Ghanaians, you know, had no no eyes to 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 to, to look into. So they stole money, building a war chest. How much can we take? And it got to a point where. If you were sitting anywhere, if you had issues with government, any pending issues in the courts, mm. you have people who walk to you and say, nah, what's up now, immediately. So when you come, come to this, and, and then you take your share. Uh. We talk of an NDC MP in the Sujaman area mm. who is taking a whooping 20 million mm. Ghana cities. It's a settlement. And she simply denies. But if you, when if there's you, evidence, it's been put to you. If you look at what 500, five, 
150, let's say, for want of a round of $550 million right. the MCA funds has done. Right. Based on the accountability structures, the procurement structures, the credit structures, right. the supervision, right. and all that. And you compare it to the seven billion borrowed by this government, as well as the taxes they've enjoyed, Enjoy. as well as all, all the other the goodies, other oil funds, oil and all. Funds. And the, even the Spinters Road, they haven't finished. They haven't finished it. Even the Kumasi Road, road. <laughs> the Kumasi Accra Kumasi Road, the present so there much. There isn't a single project it's, that it's you can amazing. point to. But so where has the money gone? But why be the NDC does not care about leaving any good or positive legacy? That is their stock in the political trade. The NDC is good at coming. How much can we chop? For us, it's not what the people need or how much we should care about the... Cons the, the, the MPP the husbands and then they come and chop. They come to chop. And the president walked into a minefield. I mean, virtually everything had been done for him. There is oil, there is I mean, everything. The president just picked everything on a silver platter. And what he had succeeded in doing is to further destroy Ghana. Was he ever in control? That is the biggest issue. The leadership paralysis that is going on. Just whilst on my way here, there's a group within the NDC who is taking serious issues. They simply cannot put with the lack of leadership in Ghana. They think that there is no president much yeah. more to care for the people. Yeah. And that is within the NDC. I think that President Mills has done himself uh, no good, but he has to begin to do something in these months of, of, of his and last the only day. way he can redeem to, himself is to, to ensure bring that the election money. is clean. But we need our money. After the Wyoming, Wyoming money, if President Mills does not bring to book all people who have their hands in it, especially Betty Moe, he should know that he himself will stand to be trialed one day. We need every penny lost to the state. And it is important that the president begins to walk and talk the way of Martin yeah, Amidou to return to the Ghanaian every personal loss through this fraudulent and scandalous we, uh, what, what, uh, judgment debt that uh, is judgment. consumed everybody. But you see, Martin, uh, as we take our last break, the question Ghanaians should be asking themselves is, uh, uh, if you sacrifice Betty, what happens to Kovna Dufo? Who signed the checks? What happens to Alex Sebefia? Who presided over it in the castle and defended Wyoming? Mean, what happens indeed to Henry Martin Newman? All the letters were copied to his office, and he must have known about this for the past two years before the monies were paid. And how come Barton Odro is still at post? The man who said that he saved us millions, when indeed he was paying out our millions. And ultimately, it comes to His Excellency the President, who a purported report, well, it's interim, so I would say it's an interim report. I can't even say it's purported. The report purposed to say that His Excellency intervened twice against all the circumstantial evidence. So what is the report hiding? Is the president telling us the truth? And if he sacrifices all these people and it gets to his door, what will he do? Indeed, Your Excellency, leadership is in paralysis. We'll take our last break. Indeed, the MPP has reflected, rebuilt, and is now poised to recapture power positively and do hopeful, valuable things that can change the true circumstances of Ghanaians and probably push uh, 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 propaganda politics to the far side. Now, I'm going to open the phone lines, but uh, just before I do, I want to read this passage from the strategic document, which is going to govern the NDC in the 2012 elections. It's very interesting. He says, in 2008, the factor of religion was proposed to be taken advantage of as a strong pillar in our campaign strategy, which to the best of my knowledge, Professor Mills practically did with excellence and distinction. This same religion factor can be all redeeming again for our agenda in 2012. And this is the area where a lawyerist fraud can be created, especially with Professor Atabils being such a strong man of religion. <laughs> a deliberate campaign strategy fostered on lies not integrity, because Wyoming Gate exposes that this is somebody who is aware of theft and may probably have been aware from day one, but has sat there and allowed your money to be taken. And they are going to deliberately organize a religious front, pay for it, it even has a name, and ask them to preach in vehicles. It's called Open Gospel Evangelism Association 
of Ghana. That is what the strategy document is going to form for the president to be preaching in commercial vehicles.